What is good you guys? Welcome back to the Hero Pro. Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how the Miami Heat completely destroyed the Atlanta Hawks in game one um, and Trey Young completely struggled. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Heat defense, um, how they can continue this in game two, whether the, the Hawks can bounce back or not, or um, whether the Heat are going to be sweeping them. Um, we're we're going to be talking about all that. So make sure you guys stay tuned till the end of the video. Leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. Uh, let's get right into it, man. I want to hear everyone's thoughts about this game. Heat fans, Hawks fans. I know it was a pretty one sided affair, but I, I want to hear everyone's thoughts about it. Um, I see, you know, what's going to happen next, you know, predictions, analysis. I, I, I'm just curious to see what you guys uh, takes are on this game. But um, from the start, man, it was complete demolition. You know, the, the Heat and the Hawks both had a slow offensive start in the first quarter um especially in like that first five minutes of the game but after that they were able to settle in um and then they were able to you know they were able to turn 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 it on and the heat were um dominant man they they did a great job on the defensive end their defense led to their offense and they absolutely blew out the hawks you know i know the score line says uh 24 point gap but uh, realistically it was like 30 35 uh you know the, the hawks put their bench guys in um and the heat put their bench guys in and they made it close at the end for a, a little bit but um the miami heat completely dominated them you know they they, they were the hawks had no answer uh whatsoever um and Trey Young was struggling, man. Trey Young had eight points, uh, very inefficient, one for 12 from the field, if I'm not mistaken. Cannot even get shots off. He only had four assists, so he wasn't really picking his apart with his playmaking. And um, he looked lost today. And then for the Heat, man, the three point shooting on a different level. You know, we shot 47% from three, uh, 18 of 38, 52% from the field. Uh, and then another glaring thing for the Heat is the amount of assists we had compared to the Hawks. We had 35 assists. The Hawks had 16. Uh, so that just shows how much more willing we were to share the ball. Duncan Robinson, player of the game, man. He absolutely demolished the Hawks from three-point line. Uh, 27 points. He only missed one shot. He was super efficient with it. Um, and yeah, if this Duncan Robinson shows up for the for the rest of the playoffs, the Heat are going to be scary. Him, P.J. Tucker got his shooting legs underneath him again. You know, he was hitting some corner threes uh, where it seemed like towards the end of the season he was struggling a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the Heat were absolutely dominant in this game. You know, they, they did a great job. I saw a lot of Hawks fans on like Twitter and stuff. They were talking about, um, you know, they were like, oh, it's unfair because the Hawks have had only two days of rest. You know, they were set up to lose this game from the start. Don't be in the plane then. Like, it's, it's, it's in your control. You don't have to be in the plane. The Heat were the number one seed and they were fairly rewarded. Um, and the Hawks, you know, they were the 10 seed or 9 seed, whatever they were. They were in the plane and... Uh, you know, you don't really get rewards when you're in the plane. You have to. Your reward is making the playoffs. So you don't complain about the amount of rest that you're getting because you guys finished at the ninth seed. So it was all in your control. If you finished at a higher seed, then you would have had more rest. But you guys finished as a playing team. So don't complain about the amount of days you had to rest. Um, rest or not, man, the, the Heat just dominated. I don't think, like, okay, even if the Hawks had, like, the amount of rest that the Heat did, it might have been closer. But I think the Heat would still have won this game. Their game plan was perfect on Trey. They were blitzing, trapping, uh, getting the ball out of his hands. They were, uh, you know, they were showing uh, two guys, three guys every time he was trying to drive. Uh, there was there was Bam there. There was Jimmy, PJ. Even when Struess was on him, you had a guy shadowing from the corners. They were helping off, but they were stunting back to the corners. It was a defensive masterclass by Eric Spolstra. He switched from the man to man. He went to the 2-2-1 two -two zone. Um, and I thought it was a completely, a completely dominant performance from the Heat. Like I said, three-point shooting uh, was big. I, I, I said in the preview that the Hawks will give up a lot of threes, and it's, it's in our, you know, control whether we knock those down or not. And we did. You know, the Heat did a really good job at making the Hawks pay uh, with their defense. I know a lot of some of those threes by Duncan were like heavily contested, but like that's just what great shooters do when they get into a rhythm. But um, we knocked a lot of open ones down as well, um, and that's you know a product of the Hawks' defense. They gave up a lot of open threes, especially in the corners. And PJ Tucker, Kyle Lowry, uh, they were making them pay. Uh, they were making them pay for show. Uh, Jimmy had a really good game. I thought you know statistically he only had 21, six and four, but um, I thought he had his imprint all over this game. You know he played exceptionally well defensively this might have been his best defensive game of the year he was all over the place uh offensively he was picking and choosing but he was attacking every time we rarely saw him you know settle for jumpers i think he took like two threes um and a couple of mid-range shots but everything else was in the paint he was you know consistently going at the hawks uh lowry was good with his playmaking bam and tyler 
were pretty inefficient and we still ended up winning this game by quite a bit uh so you know that, that that's that's a good sign for the heat because you know at some point tyler is gonna have a have a really good game and same with bam um i thought akongu did a pretty good job on him uh, but I think Bam will, you know, apart from his free throws didn't really do much today. I think that will change later in the series. You have to expect the Hawks in game two and so on and so forth to come out with more intensity. Like even if they don't knock their shots down, they're going to come out with more intensity for sure. Uh, because this is a team that, you know, they have talent. They're, they're a talented team for sure. It's, they're not going to be a walkover uh, in game two. I, I don't I don't expect game two to be a blowout like it was for game one. I, I expect the Hawks to come out and fight. Um, if, 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 if what I'm thinking about them is right, you know, if what I'm thinking about them is wrong and I hope that they just come out flat because I want the heat to win in the easiest way possible, um, then, you know, we can have this conversation again, but with, you know, I have respect for Trey Young. I have respect for the Hawks. So I, I think that they will show up in game two and fight and the heat are going to have to be ready. You cannot keep, you, you cannot let your foot off the gas pedal. Um, you have to keep it on it, man. You have to make sure that you, you know, keep the same intensity that we saw um in game one throughout the whole series um and and, and then you're gonna win the series if you if you do that because uh I, I really don't think the hawks can match up with the heat i think this is a bad matchup for them uh the amount of you know op the amount of open threes we knocked down our three-point percentage is near the top our defense is near the top um and we absolutely demolished them today uh so it was a, it was a really good you know master class by eric spolstra by the heat shout out to heat fans for showing up um wearing white you know we, we needed that from uh heat nation and the crowd uh, it was a, it was a it was a great turnout um uh, we all know that heat fans show up a little late to games but you know once we were in the second and third quarters you know we could really really feel the intensity from the crowd so shout out to the crowd for showing up wear white for game two as well um and yeah let's take care of business on our home floor you know we want to win game two um and then you know once we do that the series does not start until a team wins a game on the road so you know once we win game two or if we win game two um then game three will be the most important game of the series Because if we win game three the series is over because no team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit uh but if we do not win game three then we're gonna have to talk about you know how how far the series can go but i think the heat have shown the world um on a nationally televised scale how good they can be when they're clicking on all cylinders uh we didn't even see guys like oladipo and morris play that's how deep this team is and um yeah, it was a, it was just a completely dominant performance from them uh, by the, by the number one seed. Uh, as a lot of Heat fans expected, I saw a lot of Hawk, Hawk fans and other NBA fans picking the Hawks in this series, um, and I, I'm I'm not really sure. I mean, if you're a Hawks fan, I respect sticking with your team, but if you're a neutral, like I can, I cannot really understand why you wouldn't pick the Heat because you know they've just shown that they've been they've been the better team all season. So um, yeah, it was a great performance. I'm super excited for Game Two. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe. Um, all that good stuff, man. I'll see y'all later as always. Peace.